Hello everyone, this is Club 10M Plus's exciting new podcast that's here for you. We are all about stories, new developments and learning about individuals. Our hope is that you will join us every week to hear about our distinguished guests. We hope to inspire you, bring you laughter and make you reflect. Our guests come from all walks of life and primarily they want to share their stories. Not sure about you, but I love a good story. So Club 10M Plus have devoted their time to creating these podcasts, to sharing great ideas and stories and much more. So tune in every week to make sure that you don't miss out. It could be you next week. Want to know more? We want to hear your stories. So sign up and be our next guest. Hi, Angelina. I want to welcome you to your pitch of the Panther this afternoon. For me, a morning for you. Listen, I'm really excited to hear your story, so I'm not going to say any more. Yours comes from a place of emotion that a lot of women don't actually recognize. And I think this is really, really important that we talk about this a little bit today. But like all good guests, Angelina is going to come on again and talk about the story in the second part. So this is a two-part episode and I can't wait. So without further ado, Angelina, I'm going to over to you. Thank you, Krista. And it is an honor and pleasure to be on your show. I am so elated and thank you for reaching out to me. So let me just share my story. I had this dream and vision. So listen to this. I was born and raised in Minnesota. So at the age of 13, my mom had family in New York City. So I took a trip to New York City, flew to New York because I wanted to meet my uncles. I wanted to just get the vibe of New York City. And at age 13, I had a dream and vision of moving to New York. So with that being said, I made that happen in the middle of a snowstorm. It was when I was 21 and I dropped out of college. I said, I'm just going to fly to New York. I said, I want to make a name for myself in New York. And I want to meet someone who's going to be the love of my life. So that actually happened. Okay. So in 1988, I met this high powered businessman who I thought was going to be the love of my life. And we got married, you know, we went out and wine to dine me. He had a business in New York City. So let make a long story short, I worked at this business and we generated six figure income. Then we got married at the Justice of the Peace in 1989 in the summertime. So people thought that we were living this lavish lifestyle. We were going out to eat. We were whining and dining at clients. So where did you go? Where did you go? Well, this is nice as well. Whereabouts did you go? Different places in New York? Yeah, the Midtown Manhattan. We went to uh, Placido Domingo, who was an opera singer. He owned his own restaurant on Second Avenue. Okay. So we would go to lunch there, dinner there. We would go to Off Off Broadway Theater. We would go to Broadway shows, radio. City. Living a really, really affluent life, huh? Exactly, exactly. We were living the affluent life, mm-hmm. but something happened. Fast forward to December of 1999. We had bought a house in upstate New York, not where I live now, but downstate, two hours north of New York City, because we wanted to expand our market and everything. So I noticed that his behavior was not normal, and I was lying in bed in December. It was a cold night and I was crying. He was belittling me, verbally abusing me. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to take a time out, go into the other room and maybe I can fall asleep. This was at 11 PM at night. I didn't make it into the other room. He came from behind me. I got up, I started to walk. And then he came from behind me, grabbed me by the neck and head and threw me against the wall. I fell backwards. I was bleeding. I had a broken nose. I could tell that something cracked as soon as I hit the wall. I said, I thought my life was going to be over. But were any words exchanged at this point? Or was it just that that emotion, the hit? 
and you were just like, what has just happened? And what has just happened to me? Yeah, but could you articulate what had happened to you? Or were you so dazed? You know, I was dazed, but I was also frightened. I thought I was going to die that night. I thought that that was the end of my life. But this is somebody that has never done this to date to you. Had right. always looked after you, cared for you, made sure that you were comfortable and everything, that your every whim almost that you wanted to do, you did. And you had the time together. And was this something that just came out of the ordinary? As you said, his behavior had changed. I mean, where do you even know why it changed or how that, how it got to there? I know, I think I recall why it changed because I think business was down and he was very, very upset about money, okay? And he probably was under the impression that I didn't care, but I did care. I just had a different outlook than him. But what happened was that something happened in his early childhood that one of his family members told me. And that was that as a child, he was struck that his mom threw a shoe at him. Oh, wow. So I guess that was a trigger. Come to find out later that it was a trigger. So he decided to take me to the emergency room, which is not unusual. Okay, because this is part of the type of behavior that we we're talking about. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So he took me to the emergency room. I was under IV. I was in the ER all night up until 5 a.m. And then the no surgeon came out. The surgeon came out and said, you will need reconstructive nose surgery. Mm -hmm. So I was admitted to the hospital three days later. Meanwhile, I was all bandaged up. I was still black and blue. And I was so ashamed of myself. I was like, wow. I said, my whole life just changed in one night. Just that whole turn of events, how could this happen to me? How could this happen to me? So three days later, went into surgery. I had to stay overnight because they gave me too much morphine, Demerol, so to ease the pain. So they OD'd on that. So I ended up staying overnight, which I thought was, in retrospect, when I look back on it, that was a blessing because I had time to myself. Yeah, yeah I had time to myself. But the next day he came, picked me up, I was discharged. And then there was the period of eight years where things were okay, but I didn't feel that way. I wanted, there was just some business had improved, but then 9-11 happened. Mm -hmm. So business fell 90% that year. So this was an up and down cycle. And I wanted to be that devoted wife. Okay. And, but finally what happened was in 2008, the stock market crashed yes. and we lost, we felt over, that. felt that. I felt that. I was like, oh my God, now we lost a lot of money. We lost over a hundred thousand dollars in the stock market. So his behavior started to change. And then I said to myself, you know what, instead of staying home, I'm not going to, you know, live my life staying home with them 24 seven and, and hearing him complain and you know, be more abusive and blame me. So I went out to work in corporate America to make a name for myself. Yay, well Thank done. You, Thank you, you. had that, that determination that, you know, that drive that pushes you forward that sort of says, well, what am I going to do? I don't want to have the, a repeat scenario of something I experienced, what, 10 years before, because that's what happened because of influence or the external influence is nothing that you could control so right. you did something constructive about that and that is brilliant and um, so so you went to corporate america you you were working and you tell me the rest yes so working in corporate america and he wasn't happy about that he became more jealous and resentful and then he really started to put me down. He wrote letters behind my back. He complained behind my back, humiliated me in public when we were at a family event. So finally, I drew a line in the sand. In May of 2010, I woke up one morning and I decided I'm gonna file for divorce. So I drove down to the attorney's office and wrote out a check for $5,000 that I didn't have, but I wrote out the check anyways. 
That's I had to borrow money. Yeah. <laughs> so, which was brave of me to do because that took a lot of courage because I knew that I deserved to live a better life. I didn't want to live like this anymore. I felt trapped that it was, it was like a volcano. Wow. At that wow. volcano, we're going to end this episode. So part two, you'll have to tune in to find out all about the volcano. What happened post volcano? Because here you are looking amazing. So your story hasn't finished and we're going to continue it next time round. And I want to thank you for joining me today. And part two will be coming very soon. And take care for now, everyone that's watching. And uh, we will take two. Hello, everyone. This is Club 10M Plus's exciting new podcast that's here for you. We are all about stories, new developments, and learning about individuals. Our hope is that you will join us every week to hear about our distinguished guests. We hope to inspire you, bring you laughter, and make you reflect. Our guests come from all walks of life, and primarily, they want to share their stories. Not sure about you, but I love a good story. So Club 10M Plus have devoted their time to creating these podcasts, to sharing great ideas and stories and much more. So tune in every week to make sure that you don't miss out. It could be you next week. Want to know more? We want to hear your stories. So sign up and be our next guest.